prison terms of 10 to 40 years. In other news, USA Today is reporting that former Trump aide Alan Weisselberg has been sentenced to five months for perjury in fraud trial. Uh, a New York judge sentenced Alan Weisselberg, the former chief financial officer for the Trump Organization, to five months in jail for perjury on Wednesday. That just happened today. Uh, this is his second stint behind bars for lying during former President Trump's civil fraud trial. Weisselberg, 76, pleaded guilty in March to lying under oath when answering questions in a deposition in May and at the trial in October about allegations that Trump misrepresented his wealth on financial statements. Trump, the presumptive Republican presidential nominee, was ordered to pay $454 million for exaggerating the value of his real estate for years. New York judge, uh, the New York judge had said that when Weisselberg pleaded guilty, that uh, she would sentence him to another five months. And uh, today he began his second stint at the Rikers Island Jail Complex. Uh, you know, five months. Uh, some might say that's uh, a, a long time. Uh, I think most of us would say may not be long enough, considering uh, uh, the, uh, the charges that were leveled against him. But moving along, uh, speaking of Trump, he's been out there talking, saying that Arizona abortion ruling went too far. That's what he's saying. Former President Trump said that just today, that the Arizona Supreme Court went too far ruling that the state's 160-year-old near total abortion ban can be enforced. Trump made the comment while speaking to reporters after landing at Hartsfield Jackson International Airport ahead of his campaign fundraiser. Uh, the former president predicted that Arizona governors, Arizona's governor and others are, quote, going to bring it back into reason. While he said the court overstepped, Trump also reiterated his position that the issue of abortion should be left up to the state. Under the law from 1864, we want to remind you that anyone who performs a procedure or helps a woman access that care could face felony charges in up to two to five years in prison. The law includes an exception to save the woman's life. President Biden's campaign said in response to Trump's remarks that the former president, quote, owns the suffering and chaos happening right now, including in Arizona, because he proudly overturned Roe. Speaking of Biden, uh, why beating inflation is turning out to be as hard as losing weight. Beating inflation is starting to feel a lot like losing weight, at least before the Ozempic era. Uh, losing the first pounds is generally, generally easier. It gets a little bit harder uh, once uh, uh, you're in it for some time. A data released today showed that consumer prices are moving in the wrong direction once again, rising 3.5% in March from a year earlier, a little hotter than the 3.4% rise economists had predicted. That also marked a slight pickup from the 3.2% annual gain seen in February, and inflation in March also turned out to be hotter than expected when measured on a monthly basis. Inflation at these levels is still significantly better than it was two years ago when it peaked at a decade high of 9.1%, but inflation is proving to be very stubborn. Although the feds have managed to get inflation down significantly from two years ago, it's finding uh, it exceedingly hard to push it below the 3% level. And so we'll be sure uh, to keep an eye on that um, uh, because, uh, uh, you know, taking a toll on the lives of real people and it's also taking a toll on uh, the potential re-election of President Biden. The LA Times today had a headline that read, why Biden is getting little credit for the economy, especially in California. And in that piece by Don Lee at the LA Times, he says that as President Biden struggles to sell Bidenomics to skeptical voters, he's facing the all too real consequences of stubbornly high inflation, but he's also battling human psychology. And both of those factors may be especially strong in California, where most economists agree that the American economy during Biden's presidency has made a remarkable recovery from the pandemic. 
and it continues to outperform expectations, even if California isn't doing quite as well. But polls have consistently shown that the public, by and large, holds a negative view of the economy and, by extension, Biden's handling of it. And so while partisan politics, pandemic hangover, and other factors of colored people's attitudes, experts say inflation appears to be the single biggest economic albatross for Biden. Uh, when we come forward, we're digging even deeper into the headlines. And then a little bit later, we want to play with you part of this morning's exclusive interview on the Tavis Smiley Show with Dr. Cornell West, independent presidential candidate. Uh, he announced today his VP pick. And I'll give you a hint. She's no stranger to a more perfect union. We'll tell you who she is and play just a little bit of that interview for you in case you missed it in just a little bit. You're listening to A More Perfect Union on KBLA, on KBLA Talk 1580. More when we come forward. The station you turn to when you've had it up to here with cultural incompetence. KBLA Talk 1580. I'm going out with the girls this weekend. Nails, done. Outfit, stunner. And my skin, I know it's going to be glowing because I glammed up my shower routine with new Olay Indulgent Moisture Body Wash. It smells so luxurious and moisturizes deep into my skin with its super rich, creamy lather that's bursting with vitamin B3. So my skin glows and my confidence grows. Try new Olay Indulgent Moisture Body Wash for glowing skin in just 14 days. KBLA Talk 1580 is the fastest growing talk radio station in Southern California. Home to 50,000 watts and an audience reach of 12 million listeners. KBLA Talk 1580 is a pioneer for black audio content, including our groundbreaking $2 million climate justice campaign and the most loyal influential audience. According to an independent research study by the polling firm of Iteris, for the second consecutive year, KBLA Talk 1580 is the most trustworthy, reliable, and credible news source for black audiences and beyond in Southern California. Let KBLA Talk 1580 power your advertising dollars. Our omni-channel custom marketing solutions are specifically tailored to connect with your ideal target audience. We leverage audio, podcasts, streaming, digital, social media, and local activations to get your message out to the black community. Get in touch with our advertising team today at advertising at KBLA1580.com. That's advertising at KBLA1580.com. KBLA1580. We've got black. Right now at Macy's, it's time for a spring refresh. Shop our great shoe sale and save 30 to 40% off Tommy Hilfiger, Madden Girl, and more top names. And take 35 to 70% off during our diamond sale for a little sparkle that goes with everything. Plus, get our lowest prices of the season with 20 to 60% off furniture, mattresses, and more specials. Download the app for even more great deals at Macy's. Savings off sale and clearance prices. Exclusions apply. I feel occasional burning and stabbing in my hands as I age. I sometimes feel numbness and tingling in my feet as I get older. It's starting to get in the way of doing what I love. At Nervive, we hear you and we can help. Nervive's clinically studied dose of alpha lipoic acid reduces occasional nerve discomfort in as little as seven days with continued daily use. Now that I know, I'm taking control. Try Nervive Nerve Relief and say yes to healthy nerves. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Without the ones like you, who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional-grade industrial supplies. Count on real-time product availability and fast delivery. Call, click Granger.com or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. The Righteous Rage, and don't be afraid to say what you see. We're KBLA Talk 1580. Union on KBLA Talk 1580. I'm Dr. Nicolai Corte, and we are digging even deeper into the headlines, some really important headlines, headlines that, uh, uh, you know, are a snapshot in terms of the things that people are talking about and thinking about, uh, not just uh, right here in Washington, D.C., where I'm at uh, uh, currently, uh, but, uh, you know, from 
Capitol Hill to Wall Street to Main Street, uh, these are some of the issues people are paying attention to, uh, including how an upscale West Side Los Angeles neighborhood has been hit very hard by State Farm home insurance cancellations. Uh, my DC turned LA bestie uh, uh, this this story to me this morning that was in the LA Times, and I knew I absolutely had to share it with you as thousands of Californians uh, who won't see their home insurances renewed by State Farm this summer are homeowners in Los Angeles County with some upscale West Side neighborhoods hit hard. This according to the insurer's recent filings with the Department of Insurance. A majority of the insurer's customers in neighborhoods in West Los Angeles, as well as uh, in or near the Santa Monica Mountains, including Bel Air, Pacific Palisades, and Woodland Hills, are going to lose their coverage. The State Farm move affects some of the county's uh, hoity-toity neighborhoods, adding another layer of expense and financial risk for homeowners in areas that were already costly and uh, imperiled by wildfires. Older homeowners and those with comparatively lower incomes who bought when housing was much cheaper could be hard hit. Last month, State Farm, the largest home insurance provider in California, said it would drop 72,000 property policies across the state amid a home insurance crisis. Of those, about 30,000 are home insurance policies. And so uh, this is uh, something serious. And if this can happen in California, uh, what does it mean for other states, particularly states that uh, have a great risk when it comes to natural disasters. Uh, and so, you know, we're going to continue to keep our eye on this. I know we've reached out uh, to the offices of some elected officials, including the mayor's office in Los Angeles, as well as uh, we'll, we'll be reaching out to uh, the uh, insurance uh, 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 commissioner uh, for the state of California, uh, Ricardo Lara, uh, to uh, really get you the information that you need to know, particularly if you live in these areas or if you have neighbors or friends or family that lives in these these neighborhoods. Uh, just a moment ago, we were talking about the impact of inflation, how stubborn it's been and the impact that that, that has had on our economy. Uh, well, you know, for folks uh, in these parts of L.A. County, uh, you know, this is just a another uh, drain on their budget. Uh, that they may not have anticipated. And so uh, we will uh, make sure to, to stay on top of, of this story. Uh, but um, uh, moving on to uh, our, our celebration of uh, inaugural Black Maternal Health Week. So from April 11th to April 17th, this is now known as Black Maternal Health Week. And it's super duper important that we... Uh, we lift up the voices that are are in the fight around issues affecting uh, Black maternal health. Uh, we know that the White House has recommitted themselves to ending the maternal health crisis that's taking the lives of far too many of our nation's mothers. Women in America are dying at a higher rate from pregnancy-related causes that women in any other developed country. It's happening more here than for women in any other developed nation. Black women in particular face even more risk and are three times more likely to die from pregnancy-related causes than white women. That is no small part because of a long history of systemic racism and bias. We're just going to call it how we see it. Studies that uh, show that uh, when Black women suffer from severe injuries or pregnancy complications or just simply ask for assistance, they're often dismissed or ignored in the healthcare setting that are, are supposed to be uh, rooting for them, are supposed to be caring for them. Uh, people of color, including expecting mothers, also bear the brunt of environmental injustices like air and water pollution, which worsen health outcomes. And too often, Black mothers lack access to safe and secure housing, affordable transportation, and affordable healthy food. This is unjust and unacceptable. We know this. Um, and uh, we know that these dots connect, that Black maternal health is not happening in a vacuum, but it is connected to a number of other injustices that we see in our 
uh, community. And so um, right here, we don't just talk about problems. We talk about solutions. And uh, folks in Congress, like Representative Adams and Underwood, have announced that uh, uh, maternal health priorities have been included in the fiscal year 2024 bipartisan appropriations law. Today, the Black Maternal Health Caucus, co-chaired by uh, Representatives uh, Alma Adams of North Carolina and Lauren Underwood of Illinois, released a statement after President Biden signed uh, some critical maternal health priorities in the law as a part of this bipartisan consolidated appropriations act uh and um uh, you know the black maternal health caucus led efforts to secure these resources in the final uh appropriations package and uh, their inclusion reflects the strength of the uh, black maternal health caucus's advocacy and broad bipartisan recognition of just the urgent need to address our nation's growing maternal health crisis. And so, you know, we don't always hear a whole lot of headlines coming out of Washington where people are solving problems. It seems to be that, you know, you more often hear about people bickering over problems um, and playing sometimes what appears to be schoolyard games, games of chicken. Um, but this is an example of, uh, of uh, folks in Congress um, actually working across the aisle uh, to uh, address some of the systemic issues that uh, make pregnancies uh, more difficult, more deadly uh, for uh, all women, but particularly Black women. And so over $100 million in this momnibus uh, funding package is nothing to snuff at. Uh, and so, uh, you know, congratulations to everybody who had a hand in uh, making that appropriation happen, happen from the members of Congress on Capitol Hill uh, to the activists and organizers outside of Washington uh, and particularly on the state and local level uh, working to advance similar uh, legislative solutions. And so, you know, this is a part of how we build a more perfect union. It's a part of how it happens. Uh, and uh, speaking of the local level, PRISM is reporting that Jackson, Mississippi residents now get uh, a voice. They get a voice in negotiations over the city's water crisis. Jackson, Mississippi residents will now have a formal seat in negotiations that could determine the future of clean water access. The change comes from a motion to intervene in the Environmental Protection Agency's case against the city of Jackson, filed by the Center for Constitutional Rights, Forward Justice and the American Civil Liberties Union of Mississippi on behalf of the Mississippi Poor People's Campaign and the People's Advocacy Institute. It marks the first time in decades that Jackson residents will have a voice in the rehabilitation of the water infrastructure. You might remember that for years, the water infrastructure in the capital city of 150,000 residents has failed against extreme weather like flooding and freezing temperatures, worsening climate events or emerging pressures on the water system. And still advocates uh, say that the reason Jacksonians lack access to reliable, safe water are reflective of a deeper pattern of anti-Black city planning, subpar, subpar infrastructure funding, and a failed promise from the federal government to invest in environmental justice communities. And so, again, this is another example of you know, when people do exactly what I say after, at the end of every show, don't panic, organize, do what you can from where you are with what you have. Well, here's a real life example of organizers on the ground in Jackson, Mississippi, and advocates on the ground in Jackson, Mississippi, doing exactly that. Uh, we have followed this story. We will continue to follow this story. The story of Jackson is the story of our nation. Uh, and uh, we can't be any more perfect if Jackson is not. And so we'll be sure uh, to keep you posted on all uh, of the developments there. Uh, but speaking of recent developments, not sure if you heard, but uh, made some big news this morning. Uh, Cornell West announced Black Lives Matter activist Professor Melina Abdullah as his VP pick. That's right, independent presidential candidate Cornell West just this morning on the Tavis Smiley Show, right here on KBLA Talk 1580, announced his running mate, Melina Abdullah, 
uh, a Pan-African Studies professor and co-founder of Black Lives Matter Los Angeles, as he seeks to gain ballot access in more states ahead of the November general election. Wes and Abdullah appeared together on the Tavis Smiley Show, uh, previewing their long shot ticket as a more liberal alternative to the other third party ticket options. Wes 70, a prominent activist and author that we all know, initially launched his campaign last June seeking the Green Party's nomination before he opted to become an independent candidate. His announcement comes as he aims to qualify for the ballot in 26 states and D.C., which require an independent presidential candidate petitioning for ballot access to submit the name of their running mate. Um, and so uh, when we come forward, we're going to play just a little bit of this interview in case you missed it uh, with Dr. Cornell West and Dr. Melina Abdullah. Uh, and then next week, next Tuesday, you can look forward to Dr. Melina Abdullah being a guest right here on A More Perfect Union. More when we come forward. You're listening to KBLA Talk 1580. The quiet part out loud, loud. KBLA Talk 1580. I'm Amber Payton. Here's the latest on the Black Information Network. There's been some unrest in Chicago following the release of police body cam footage showing the shooting of a 26-year-old black man. Dexter Reed was killed after being stopped by five Chicago police officers last month. The newly released body cam footage appears to confirm Reed fired the first shot and that officers responded with 96 shots fired in just 41 seconds. Nearly 100 people gathered outside the 11th District Station Monday night, leading to a clash with police that resulted in at least one person being hospitalized. Federal leaders are learning more about the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse. Maryland Governor Wes Moore made the trip to Washington, D.C. Tuesday to ask for federal support to help rebuild the historic crossing. Moore, who was Black, spoke directly with members of the Biden-Harris administration and other congressional leaders. President Biden previously said the federal government should cover the entire bill for the rebuild. That's the latest. I'm Amber Payton on your home for 24-7 News, the Black Information Network. Can your roof handle extreme weather? If you have leaks or a 20-year-old roof, go to localroofs.com to schedule a free roof checkup. Localroofs.com proudly offers five-star service with flexible financing, including 0% interest for 18 months on approved credit. Go to localroofs.com. <laughs> this is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. The final TV ratings are in. For the first time in the history of NCAA basketball, the Women's National Championship game outdrew the men's title game. The Iowa-South Carolina game on Sunday attracted a record 18.7 million viewers. The UConn-Purdue men's title game drew 14.8 million. Women's college basketball exploded this season, and the popularity is expected to continue. USC freshman guard Isaiah Collier announced today he's entering the NBA draft. Collier is projected to be a first-round pick between 10 and 15. Collier averaged 16.3 points and 4.3 assists. He was expected to be a one-and-done. Collier was the nation's number one recruit in the class of 2023 from Wheeler High School in Marietta, Georgia. The Clippers are back in action tonight at Crypto.com. They have a rematch with Phoenix after last night. The Lakers are off until Friday at Memphis. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson on KBLA Talk 1580. This is TBLA Talk 1580. Talk radio. That's music to your ears. ears. We're unapologetically progressive. TBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. Are you interested in catching up on all the latest entertainment news, trending topics, and exciting interviews? I got you. Tune in to The Raw Report with Robin Ayers, Monday through Friday, 6 to 7 p.m. I'm your host, Robin Ayers. Join me every weekday with some of the best entertainment contributors in the business as we break down what's going on, who's got next, and what not to miss. Only on The Raw Report with Robin Ayers. Unapologetically progressive. KBLA Talk, 1580s. We've got your black. I have diabetes. I'm at risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. I have asthma. I'm at risk, too. 
If you're 19 or older with chronic conditions like asthma, diabetes, COPD, or heart disease, or are 65 or older, you are at increased risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about Prevnar 20, pneumococcal 20-valent conjugate vaccine, a Pfizer vaccine that can help protect you against pneumococcal pneumonia in just one dose. Even if you've already been vaccinated with other pneumonia vaccines, Prevnar 20 may help provide added protection. Prevnar 20 is approved for adults to help prevent infections from 20 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia. Continued approval may depend on a supportive study. Don't get Prevnar 20 if you've had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Adults with weakened immune systems may have a lower response to the vaccine. Side effects include pain and swelling at the injection site, fatigue, headache, muscle, and joint pain. For full prescribing information, please call 1-855-213-2138 or visit Prevnar20.com. What? What? Yeah. Yeah. yeah! The California Crusader newspaper would like to thank all of our subscribers for their support throughout the years, proudly serving the South Los Angeles and South Bay areas for more than 40 years. The California Crusader is a multicultural, black-owned, adjudicated newspaper that focuses on providing newsworthy information to the people in our community. We're constantly looking for ways to assist businesses in our community to connect with our subscribers. We provide low-cost, effective ways to promote your business with our reasonable and affordable advertising rates. You can participate by suggesting, sharing, and submitting your stories on the California Crusader newspaper Community Share Facebook group page or visit our website at cal-cruise-news.com. That's calcruisenews.com. Then click on the Submit Now button located on the top right corner of the home page or text CCN to 42828. Again, text CCN to 42828. The California Crusader newspaper, working together to build a better community for our future. Subscribe today. today. We're not for everybody, but we're for everybody. You're listening to KBLA Talk 1580. 80. To a more perfect union on KBLA Talk 1580. I'm Dr. Nicole Corte. And if you are like me and you're following all things election 2024, you didn't want to miss this morning's uh, announcement uh, of uh, Dr. Cornell West, independent candidate for president. He announced his VP pick, and it's a very familiar voice, a very familiar presence right here on the KBLA Talk 1580. Uh, airwaves. I'm talking about Dr. Melina Abdullah, uh, co-founder of Black Lives Matter LA chapter and uh, co-founder of Black Lives Matter Grassroots. Uh, she is a tenured professor at Cal State University, Los Angeles, and she has been selected as uh, Cornell West VP pick uh, for president. And so take a listen to their interview just this morning with Tavis Smiley uh, right after the announcement was made. Tavis Smiley and Dr. Cornell West and Dr. Melina Abdullah, uh, we have just announced, in case you've just tuned in, uh, that uh, Dr. West has uh, selected his running mate uh, for his campaign for the White House. Her name is Melina Abdullah. She is Dr. Melina Abdullah. And we were sort of laughing earlier about the fact that this is not laughing. It's a serious business. Um, this is the first all black ticket, uh, to my knowledge, running for the White House. Uh, certainly the first ticket with two PhDs on it. Uh, and if that ain't enough, I was just saying to Melina, something just hit me, Dr. Abdullah. I call her Melina all the time. Now that she's a vice presidential candidate, I got to start calling her <laughs> no, Dr. Abdullah. Uh, but I was just saying to Dr. Abdullah uh, that I know somebody else who also went to Howard, is an AKA, is from Northern California, and just happens to be the current vice president. How funny is that? It's it's striking, <laughs> but that's about all that we have in common. Yeah. Right? <laughs> well, and then and then we also talked about we're both two short fans allegedly. But yeah. I think I think that I I probably can get deeper in the cuts than yeah. Kamala Harris. Can. Yeah, and I'm, <laughs> and I'm sure there are many many things y'all disagree on. We'll talk about some of that as we move through this hour, given the time I have left. Doctor West, I'm going to do for the third time. Can you hear me now? Oh, I can hear you, though, brother. It was, it's a joy to hear you and Sister Melina yeah, it, having a wonderful conversation. I just apologize for, for not being no, able no, no, to no, no, uh, no. It's uh, it's this connected. This is this, is, like. this is live radio. It's technology. Uh, sadly, uh, sometimes things happen. Um, we tried to work this out. Doctor West happens to be on the East Coast today. Doctor Abdulli is here on the West Coast, and we tried to work this out, but uh, we we had some some sense. That this story, oh, well, we always work. We work with what we got. Though, that's brother. right. That's we right. Work with what we got. <laughs> we, yeah, we, we, we didn't want the story to get out before we could get on the air with it. So we just. Well, I wanted to make sure this story 
came from your show. I, I don't care that. what form or what presentation yeah. it is. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, I appreciate that. This let, is let me... about struggle, though, brother. This is, a, You know, my mind very much is on Brother Dexter Reed, though, man. Mm -hmm. Just shot 96 times in yeah. Chicago now. The kind of thing that Sister Molina's been fighting on the street, writing on, writing both scholarly works, but also going to jail. Yeah. But the brother shot 96 times. You see what I mean? See, that's that's really what serious politics is about. How do you keep the focus on the suffering, alleviating the suffering by raising our voices in such a way that we can generate some social motion to do something about it? His precious parents are, 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 have tears in their eyes and we speak to those tears, those police must be accountable. And when we talk about the abolition of any form of oppression, it gets in the way of the precious humanity and the priceless sanctity of human beings beginning on the chocolate side of town. We want to abolish police murder, abolish police brutality. We want to abolish poverty. We want to abolish homelessness. We want to abolish this greed that we seeing organized and on Wall Street and Pentagon and Silicon Valley, those are the things that myself and Sister Melina will be fighting for day in, day out, week in, week out. And that's where we're coming from. That's what this campaign is all about, my brother. I'm glad you went there. Let me follow up right quick with this. Uh, watching my time, I want to cover some more ground here. Um, Black Lives Matter, which does does not speak for Melina Abdullah. And at this point, she's speaking for the campaign and not BLM. I understand that distinction. But I asked her uh, when we couldn't hear you moments ago um, about whether or not any of the BLM storyline narrative might become baggage for the campaign. Let me just ask you a point blank question, given what you've just said uh, about Brother Dexter Reed uh, being shot 96 times. Um, how, 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 do, how do you square the notion of police accountability? 21st century policing that is constitutional with the call that many have made, including those in BLM, for the abolishing of police. Well, one, the Black Freedom Movement has always had abolition at its center. We mm -hmm. wanted to abolish slavery. That's so during the truth is Harriet Tubman. That's Ray Big Douglas. Then we wanted to abolish Jim and Jane Crow. That's Ida B. Wells Barnett. That's W.B. E. Du Bois. That's NAACP at its best. Then we want to abolish predatory capitalist processes that are crushing people. That's what Huey Newton was about. That's what Erica Higgins was about. Abolition is at the center. So the question is, what are we talking about abolishing? Mm -hmm. All of us should want to abolish police murder, police brutality, abolishing the lack of accountability of police. And we want to be constructive. We want community control. We want civic oversight so that there's forms of safety in our communities, beginning with the hood. Unfortunately, policing on chocolate sides of towns in the hood too often are associated with repression and containment. And on the rich vanilla side of town, it's about protect and serve. No, we want to abolish all forms of domination that get in the way of our humanity. We want to ab <laughs> abolish mass incarceration the way it's presently constituted. How can anybody support solidary confinement and isolation that way? Mm -hmm. We want to abolish the unfairness and the injustice so that Mumi Abu-Jamal, we move toward his birthday, so that he's able to be treated fairly and be able to go free. That's the kind of language that's necessary. And any time any person or any movement has a love of poor and working people, and especially a love of black poor and working people, that's never a burden for me. Yeah. That's why I'm blessed to be working with Sister Melita. Yeah. She's a love warrior. Yeah. She's a love warrior. I ain't that, that ain't no burden for me. That might be a burden for the mainstream. That might be a burden for people trying to make the, the try, trying to make their way in and out. No. Anybody in love with the people ain't no burden for me, my brother. I got two minutes here, Dr. West. Let me ask you this and we can continue when we come forward. Um, what does it mean that you have chosen someone? Uh, we were talking about this earlier. Who's not just a Muslim. Uh, many people will have commentary about that in the days ahead. I am certain. Uh, but you chose someone who, like yourself, has never run for elective office. And here you are now running for president and vice president. How do you respond to those who say, why run if you've never run before? Well, brother, Sister Molina and I have been running for justice for the last 
number of decades. I'm much older than she is. I ain't going to go into all that. I met her in grade two at Howard University with Julian Bailey and the others. So, mm-hmm. But most of her life, she's been running for justice. We need people to run for office who are already running for justice. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm running for Jesus. She's running for Allah. That's a beautiful thing. You see, I do not exist without Malcolm X. I don't exist without Muhammad Ali. I don't exist without Naima Coltrane, the first wife of John Coltrane, who was so magnificent in her own way, just like the second wife, Alice, was a Hindu. I don't exist without Yusuf Latif. So that Melina is a law loving free black woman, womanist, looking at the world through the lens of the doings and sufferings of black women. I'm a Jesus-loving, free black man. We overlap in a magnificent way. And in, in that regard, I think it, it's, I'm, I'm very proud to be running with my dear black womanist, Muslim, freedom fighter, uh, love warrior, as I said, said before. And we're going we, we to turn things around. I can tell you that right now. We're gonna, and we're going to make the connection of what's going on in Gaza with what happened to Brother Dexter Reed. Why? Because we want to abolish occupation. We want to abolish domination. We want to abolish any form of racist ideology that believes that a Palestinian life doesn't have the same value as a white life or, or, or Israeli life or any other life. That's where we are coming from, my brother. It's official. Dr. Cornell West has chosen his running mate for vice president. Her name is Dr. Melina Abdullah. More with Dr. West and Dr. Abdullah when we come forward on Tavis Smile. And that was uh, that was the interview. That was the interview this morning that folks are buzzing about. I'll be um, talking about it here and uh, talking about it on Saturday on CNN in the morning. There's a lot of conversation here. What does this mean for uh, the Biden campaign, for the Trump campaign? What does this mean in terms of other third party candidates that are running like RFK Jr.? Uh, what does this mean for the Black Lives Matter uh, movement and its agenda? What does it mean for Dr. Cornell West and Dr. Melina Abdullah's uh, uh, shot at the White House? Uh, there's so much to unpack here, and I'm sure we'll be talking about this uh, uh, quite a bit in the foreseeable future. But uh, more uh, on uh, some of the other headlines uh, that you should be tracking when we come forward. So you just used bug spray in your home. Now what? Well, between the waiting and waiting for things to dry up and keeping your family away from the mess, it hits you. You could have used Zevo. Unlike other bug sprays that stick around, Zevo goes from kill to clean in seconds. Plus, it's safe for use around people and pets when used as directed. Zevo, people friendly bug deadly. There are many healthcare organizations serving our community. Not all are dedicated to community partnerships that educate, build trust, inspire hope, and improve outcomes. Providence has a robust community outreach program and has dedicated $50 million over the next five years to support organizations addressing health disparities in local communities of color. Examples of this commitment include the Biddy Mason Community Wellness Center on the first AME campus, providing medical screenings, mental health therapy, nutrition, and culturally sensitive holistic classes. The Black Mama's Glowing Peer Support Group that focuses on maternal mental health, birth planning, and social support. Providence is committed to building trusted partnerships with community organizations to better understand and dismantle structural, racial, and cultural barriers to better health. During Minority Health Month, Providence is sponsoring Health for a Better World. Informative conversations with Providence health professionals on Urban Family Focus every Saturday in April at 7 a.m. To find a Providence Health System facility near you, log on to Providence.org. It's the celebration of a living legend. It's the it's me, Frankie Vessel. Thank you for the love. To me. Sing to me. To be the soul icon, Anthony Hamilton. Plus, after seven, it's a Mother's Day celebration, May 12th in the Kia Forum. You're all watching. Get tickets to Ticketmaster. The incentive on the Black Promoters Collective. This is KBLA Talk 1580, where everybody is somebody and nobody is a stranger. You belong here. 
You're listening to A More Perfect Union on KBLA Talk 1580. I'm Dr. Nicole Corte. You were just listening to uh, just a snippet from uh, this morning's interview on the Tavis Smiley Show uh, with Dr. Cornell West, uh, independent candidate for president, uh, announcing his VP pick, uh, a very familiar name in Los Angeles, uh, California native, uh, Dr. Melina Abdullah. Uh, she is uh, co-founder of Black Lives Matter Los Angeles chapter. Uh, she's also co-founder of Black Lives Matter Grassroots. Uh, and she will be a guest right here on A More Perfect Union uh, on Tuesday. And so we'll have a chance uh, to ask her uh, some very, very, very important questions. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask her, uh, feel free to use the open mic feature on the KBLA app uh, and uh, send me a note. Uh, let me know what's uh, on your mind uh, as uh, you might be thinking about uh, Dr. West and Dr. Uh, Abdullah's, uh, uh, you know, shot uh, for uh, the White House. Um, one of the things that Dr. West mentioned in the interview that you just heard uh, was uh, the young man who was shot and killed in Chicago and how uh, he's currently on the mind of Dr. West and Dr. Abdullah. Um, USA Today is reporting that seatbelt violation a black man dead on a Chicago street after cops fired nearly 100 bullets. For Sheila Banks, uh, the late afternoon of March 21st began easy with her son Dexter Reed heading out to enjoy his new SUV. He said, Mama, I'm going to go out for a ride. That's what she recalled on that Tuesday late afternoon. And it ended with Reed, 26, being gunned down on a residential corner by Chicago police officers who fired nearly 100 rounds in less than a minute, according to Civilian Office of Police Accountability, the city's police watchdog agency. Officers said they pulled Reed over for not wearing a seatbelt. A contention that the Civilian Office of Police Accountability questions amid rising tensions in recent weeks over the killing and officers' use of deadly force. In releasing footage of the shooting just this past Tuesday, the Police Accountability Board said that Reed, quote, appears to have fired first. But attorneys for the family said a deeper investigation needs to happen. They also say the traffic stop was unconstitutional and not the first time that Chicago cops have falsely claimed seatbelt violations as the impetus for confrontational pullovers of drivers. Last, but certainly not least, they allege that Tuesday that Reed was killed while unarmed and trying to surrender. City officials from Mayor Brandon Johnson to State Attorney Kim Fox lamented Reed's death, but have not said it warrants charges against the officers. The shooting is the latest in a city that has long had a history of controversy surrounding police killings of men of color. Now, this is a story that we've heard too many times. You could really just sort of take out the name and insert different name, insert different city, insert different police department. And the story doesn't radically change. Not at all, not even close. And the reality is, is that is in part what people are responding to. How is it that a seat belt violation ended with this 26-year-old Black man dead on a Chicago street 100 bullets later, just going to take a drive in his car? You know, it's, it's making me think of how Ohio officers, not far from Illinois, shot a black teen who was holding a fake gun. Uh, this was a story uh, coming out of 
Akron, Ohio, where an Akron police officer shot a 15-year-old boy who was holding a fake gun within seconds of stopping him. That's what the newly released body camera footage shows. The Washington uh, Post is reporting that Ryan Veda Westlake, who's been with the Akron police nearly a decade, shot Tavion Kuntz William in the wrist on April 1st, leaving the black teenager with injuries that were not life-threatening. The officer is on paid leave as state officials investigate that incident. And the footage released on Monday shows Tavion screaming, it's fake, over and over. His voice cracks and he begins to cry while complying with Westlake's commands to get on the ground. And investigators confirmed that the gun was fake. Akron Police Captain Michael Miller told the Washington Post today that he he uh, that the department wouldn't be commenting further because the uh, investigation is open. In which case, I say, let's keep opening these investigations. Enough is enough. You know, does anybody ever stop and think that if you are a black man in this country or a man of color in this country and you're encountering law enforcement, because of all the stories that we hear and all the images that we see, you don't think that there are, there are moments where we are fearing for our lives that may cause us to, for that fight or flight system to kick in? Anybody ever consider that? I've considered that. Maybe you have too. That's the quiet part out loud. More when we come forward. You're listening to A More Perfect Union on KBLA Talk 1580. A safe place to go loud, loud, loud. A great place for progressive politics. KBLA Talk 1580. Thanks for calling Discover. This is Gabby. Hey, Gabby. It's Jennifer Coolidge. Hi. I'm, I'm so glad I reached you at 2 a.m. Oh, of course. Anyone with a Discover card can call and talk to a real person 24-7. Now, how can I help? Yeah, I used my Discover card to buy these yellow pleather pajamas, and I'm just not sure I'm pulling them off. 24-7 U.S.-based customer service. It pays to Discover. Limitations apply. Learn more at discover.com slash credit card. KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA Talk 1580 believes in community empowerment. LA's 99 neighborhood councils form the grassroots level of the Los Angeles city government. The system was created to connect LA's diverse communities to City Hall. While neighborhood council board members are volunteers, they are also public officials elected to office by the members of their community. Neighborhood councils advocate on issues like homelessness, housing, land use, emergency preparedness, public safety, parks, transportation, and sustainability. They also provide local expertise on the delivery of city services to their various communities. Neighborhood councils are open to participation by anyone who is a part of the fabric of daily life in said community. This includes those who live, work, or own property, or a business. If you are interested in stepping up to join your local neighborhood council, visit www.empowerla.org. That's empowerla.org. It's time to think globally, but act locally. This is a community call to action from KBLA Talk 1580. Broadcasting live from Lower Park, USA. USA. Welcome back. Your home for unapologetically progressive radio. KBLA Talk 1580. You're listening to a more perfect union on KBLA Talk 1580. Uh, it should be no secret to you that we have uh, a huge environmental justice initiative here on KBLA Talk 1580. It is a year long initiative uh, where you're going to hear a lot more stories about uh, climate change, but more importantly, the change makers. Uh, that have made it their business uh, to a, a, to advance climate justice uh, here uh, uh, in uh, across the country, and particularly in California. And so uh, this next story just underscores the importance of that work. USA Today is reporting that greenhouse gases are rocketing to record levels, the highest in at least 800,000 years. The cause of global warming shows no sign of slowing down. Levels 
of the three most significant human caused greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide continue their steady climb last year. This is according to federal scientists. This is a report that they put out just this month. Uh, because of the burning of fossil fuels such as coal and oil and natural gas, those three greenhouse gases in our atmosphere have risen to levels not seen in at least 800,000 years and potentially far longer, perhaps millions of years. That's what the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration is saying. Um, and, you know, this is no small thing. This is no small thing. I mean, you know, there's no plan B <laughs> in terms of where we're going to live and thrive, you know, as human beings. And so, uh, you know, it's good to see issues related to climate change going from being fringe issues in my lifetime to being mainstream issues uh, that folks just can't look away from and aren't looking away from. And so I hope uh, this uh, story underscores uh, just exactly uh, why climate change needs to be front of mind and why now. We'll have to leave it there. My thanks to the entire village that helps us to produce a more perfect union each and every day. Our executive producer, Tavis Smiley, our sound engineer extraordinaire, Miles Lowe, our show producer, Robert Battles, and podcast publishing guru. He's the man. Odell Bodie. Uh, remember, don't panic, organize. Do what you can from where you are with what you have. I'm Dr. Nicordelide Corte, and you've been listening to A More Perfect Union on KBS.